everyone. I'm Cynthia. Um, I'm the organizer of PyCon China and PY Ladies China. I work for Microsoft React team in China also. And uh, thanks so much for George to invite me to have a topic on this event. I want to share with you about uh, how to achieve more by contributing to the Python community. Mm. First, please let me introduce the Python China user group and the PY China Python China user group founded in 2014. Uh, we are the long perfect community and uh, was established by the Chinese Pythonistas and uh, we want to promote the communication between Python developers in China and abroad. Um, actually, the most important things that we do every year is last to host the PyCon China uh, in different cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Chengdu, Hangzhou, and, uh, and other cities. And uh, uh, many other events also have held across this year, such as Python Meetup. We host a Python Meetup every month and also PY ladies, which are last year, and uh, um, PY child or some other interesting events. And uh, we hope to host all of the events that uh, every person this task could communicate with each other anytime, anywhere in China. Mm. Actually, I'm the first time I meet uh, um, PyCon China and uh, PY China is uh, in the 20. 15, and uh, I was as a volunteer to take photos in these events. And in 2016, and I began to the event leader because I found it's so interesting to uh, work with all of them to host and contribute in the community, host some events. And uh, so I keep contributing like this. And because of the organize the events and I have the opportunity to travel outside Shanghai, like Beijing, Shenzhen and Hangzhou to meet different Pythonistas in different cities. And they also have a lot of different interesting stories about how to develop or use Python. In 2017, because of some reasons, we just host uh, Shanghai and Hangzhou, and also this is give us a chance to think about what's the future of the um, PyCon China and also what's the future of PY China. Um, in 2018, I began in charge of PyCon China and began the organizers. So I wanted to um, make a changes for um, PyCon China. Uh, and uh, lucky I meet uh, another uh, organizers like uh, Mr. Li Zhe Ao, uh, Xun, uh, Miao Xun, um, Da Mao, uh, Li Kou Kou, Kun Na Cao, uh, Dai Shao Fei, and other guys. Last we think uh, the young, uh, all of them are the young Pythonistas and uh, they want also want to have a different PyCon China also. So we um, we work together and uh, to host uh, PyCon Beijing. And uh, that's what uh, was about more than 1,000 Pythonistas to join us in this time. Also because of this time, that's, uh, um, uh, I noticed how important English is, I and mean, I began to learn English. Uh, in 2019, uh, the big change is that we get the sponsorship from uh, the PSF and uh, also uh, get the sponsorship from Microsoft, AWS, Elastica, JetBrains, and uh, um, other uh, great global companies. The, this is the first time that the PSF have booth in Ch Shanghai uh, that's, uh, and uh, to share with us what is PSF do and uh, we have more knowledge about PSF. And uh, we also think about this that we need to contribute more to the um, PSF and uh, to promote the Python not just in China and also all, outside of China.
in 2020s, so we have two big changes. And the first change is, is that um, we also know how difficult in 2020. So we changed our PyCon to both online and offline. And we have another um, exciting experience about online. And I think maybe about more than 10,000 uh, Pythonistas to join us lots of them without the limit of the cities and the countries. Uh, the second change is, is that because I work for Microsoft, began to keep eyes out on ladies and uh, on child. So and I think maybe we need to think about to host some events just for females. So we find, yeah, we have PY ladies. So we tried this first time online and thanks a lot uh, for the six speaker to support with us and uh, all of them from China, Germany and Japan. All of the stories about Pycon China and about the community and uh, also about the role I in charge in the community. I just want to share, I just want to share with you the idea is that in the open source community, you could try anything you want. Um, for example, in the Python community, and, and uh, sometimes I just have an idea, maybe that is uh, good for the PyCon, or maybe that is so interesting for us. And uh, also maybe that will be help us to promote Python to let uh, more guys to know this language, the great language. And uh, we will, the volunteers will, will support me to do this. And uh, we faced the challenge together. We try best to find out the solutions. So because of this, that's, uh, we will have a self value fulfillment. And uh, because of this, we will have a lot of experience and uh, I think that's uh, totally different in the companies. Mm. I always um, talk, share this, share the information with the young volunteers, lads. Uh, maybe your role, just the operation, maybe your role, just a develop, maybe, maybe your role, just the admin in the company. But if you want to have an idea to create, and uh, if you want to have an have a idea to try, uh, you will find the partners uh, or maybe the um, like-minded uh, friends in the community and uh, you could try in the community first. And if the, your project your, or your ideas are uh, successful, you, you will get a lot of uh, um, practical experience. That will be support you and uh, give you feedback on your career development. You could find another opportunity in the um, in your career development, and uh, I think uh, for to be honest, me for myself also uh, one of the example is that um, because uh, I have a four years career gap, um, because I want to have a baby, so I and I need to take care of my baby. And uh, but uh, I because the community and uh, in the past uh, five years so we always find the solution how to um, make the changes uh, and uh, make better to the PyCon China and uh, to promote more about Python in China market and uh, we always on the way to find the solution to create some opportunities by ourselves. So my experience and I have a lot got a, I got a lot of experience of in from the community. Then I could find a me then I could meet my great job at Microsoft. And I also thank a lot for my boss Michael. Uh, he always support me a lot and also she he encouraged me to keep contribute in the community also. Finally, at the end, I want to share with you that um, welcome to China.
you know, uh, if you have your some um, story about Python development, uh, or maybe if you have some open source uh, project or some interesting things to want to share with us, please uh, connect with us. And uh, we also um, have a interesting to share with you about what's happening in China and in China market. And maybe some guys will say, let's, uh, uh, you just speak English and uh, you not speak Chinese. It's uh, so difficult for uh, you to communicate with uh, Ch China Personista directors. But I, I have another um, point is that because of the development of AI technologies, and uh, there are no more, there are, the language is uh, not a barrier for us. And uh, more and more tools could support the translation work. So um, welcome to join Python developer relevant events in China. And uh, if you want to learn more about what happening in China and in China market, uh, and uh, in China developers, Pythonistas, something anything else you think you you have still interesting, you have interesting, please email with me, and we could keep in touch. Thank you so much. 谢谢，谢谢大家。Every talk today. Every talk today is so inspiring, yeah. but like Cynthia is like so big. The conference that she she can't she she organize. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, whoa! Let's let's uh get Cynthia up to to discuss a little bit and uh, ask her a little bit about uh, how she managed this. Hi, Cynthia. Sorry, I'm being myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Ni hao. Ni hao. So we use Chinese, right? It's uh, it's okay. <laughs> well, if uh, if if um, when we ask question, if you feel that it's a little um uncomfortable to um express in in English and you want to express in Mandarin. You can go ahead. I'll try to help to translate. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Then you feel more comfortable. So I want to ask one question: How do you manage such a big scale event? <laughs> oh, actually, I think this is also not manage. This is contribute. You know, um, because all of the organizers and uh, our volunteers. And uh, we have different role um, um, in this event project. So I think uh, actually um, they, all, they all have high potential or may have, have high motivation to contribute to the PyCon or the events and also community. So you just uh, need uh, to um, clarify what's uh, the ability or what's the, what's the role that they are in charge of. And uh, what's the, um, the, how to say that, responsibilities they need to take care of, um, they need to take care of eyes on the, um, sorry, my English is so well, and uh, I change uh, another information is that I, uh, is totally the same, I think the uh, community or event organization is totally the same in our company. We have a human sales manager, and we have a marketing, we have an operation, oh. we have, you know. So different guys focus on different area, and uh, we just do one thing, that's uh, the, is for better Python China or Python open community, yeah. So, How many in total? How many of you in total? Um, actually, for every PyCon, I think there are about the total now about more than one hundred volunteers will contribute for this, and uh, oh. for the, uh, <laughs> about more than twenty, you know, team leader will be more than twenty. So we just uh, um maybe work closely with the team leader, and the team leader will lead their team, the the volunteers to do the details. Yeah. That is a huge coordination because you're handling like 
10,000 you said 10,000 online last year? Yeah, I sent visitor the 10,000 because uh, also some um, pessimists from Taiwan or Hong Kong also join our events online and uh, the, the page view is more than 600 and uh, I think uh, for the live stream that will be totally different uh, with the in-person events so I think uh, at least, at least more than 10,000, yeah. So um, I'm actually um, curious about the hybrid that you did. You did online and you did offline. So you did one that is 10,000 online. And yeah. how do you manage those during this period of time for, for, for um, COVID? Um, how? Uh, you mean the data? How, how yeah. They... So when no, no, I mean like when those how many people actually attend uh, the the offsite uh, events? Because you said you have like online and at the same time you have uh, the offline event too, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think offline maybe uh, about three hundred, and uh, because we just have four uh, three cities in Beijing, Shanghai, and. Uh, Shenzhen and also you know the government also said it's, uh, uh, it's a difficult time for us and uh, if you host the in-person events, online events, you must uh, control within 100, um, uh, 100 participants. So yes, yeah, so we follow this guideline and control the numbers of the in-person events. Wow, that is impressive. I have to say that's really impressive. Okay, um, <laughs> We will invite you later on for uh, another talk while we go straight down to uh, Teams talk. Thank you so much, Cynthia, and see you later in a while. Let's uh, move on to the next talk.